steaming it up. <coughs> Hi right, guys. Uh, man, what a difference a day makes. Uh, we have gone from two of the most spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful days, year of 2024, Friday and Saturday, and now it is Sunday. Now it is Sunday, is that October 13th or 14th? 2024, and I honestly, I'm going to have to say this is the single nastiest, ugliest, grayest, darkest, gloomiest, most slit your wrist if you got the balls depressing day of the entire year. It, it is absolute just, you know, I, I have been in 22 hours, 22 hours ago that I came into my seven foot by seven foot little bivouac here in the end times and uh, trying not to go too stir crazy. So uh, I want to thank uh, a, uh, a good buddy of mine who I have not spoken to in uh, four or five years. Uh, a fellow named Dan, and I'm hoping I'm pronouncing your last name correctly here, Dan, Dan Dorison, uh, who lives with his lovely wife, Judy, down in, uh, in the woods of Kentucky, and I hope to be seeing, uh, Dan and Judy in a couple of weeks, so... Dan and Judy, I'm hoping I will be there right about a couple of weeks. I interviewed Dan and Judy uh, <clears throat> last time I was there. Unfortunately, the camera collapsed halfway through the internet. I'm going to sit here and pick ticks off this dog. This dog is absolutely infested with ticks. So uh, while I'm talking, I'm going to sit here and... Uh, pick ticks off my dog. I think I can talk and tick pick at the uh, tick pick, not dick pick, tick pick at the same time. So uh, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to uh, interview Dan and uh, Judy uh, here in a couple of weeks if Dan is still speaking to me uh, after, after this video. So one way I have been entertaining myself today is reading Dan's book. I guess he wrote it in 2022. I'm just now getting a hold of it called Addicted to BS. Addicted to BS. And as I say, hopefully we'll have a more serious uh, discussion about the BS that matters uh, here in a couple of weeks, but until then, uh, I, I, I want to talk, uh, briefly uh, uh, about the, the BS that doesn't matter. Uh, I, I don't know if Dan gets into it more later in the book. Uh, first let me, uh, d d just quickly about Dan Dorison. He is a, a, uh, retired biologist. He is, a, you know, he is a hard scientist, uh, by the book, biologist, uh, scientist, uh, by, by training, and I guess worldview, and I'm assuming, and it's certainly been confirmed, that Dan Dorson, like my mother, has exactly zero tolerance for bullshit. My mother had no more room for bullshit than, uh, than Dan does. And I also want to say that Dan and Judy, I, uh, they're the kinds of people, at least for me, like from the moment I met these people, I, I knew that they were, you know, they, they were my kind of folks. I have nothing but respect. Any, if anything, I'm getting ready to say. Uh, in, in this book is interpreted as that uh, I have 
I, I don't respect Dan's uh, opinions about bullshit. Uh, nothing could be further from the truth. This man, I, I mean, this man is, is rock solid. Uh, he walks his talk. They live in a tiny house on a hundred acres and blah, blah, blah. He, he is a, I don't even know if Dan calls himself a doomer, uh, but he, he, you know what I'm saying, he it, it is, is, is getting, instead of just talking a line, he and Judy are out there doing it. And uh, so Dan Dorison uh, is, is totally fine in my book. I have never detected one ounce, one ounce of BS in either Dan or Judy. Uh, I'm not saying we necessarily agree on every subject uh, on the planet, but I respect, I have 100% respect uh, for the man. I, I was afraid that Dan and Judy were one of the hundreds of people uh, in, in my life that disappeared out of my life because, you know, during... Uh, <clears throat> corona panic in uh, 2020, uh, that because my reading of corona panic was different than theirs, they thought their beliefs about corona panic were more important than our friendship, and I thought that is what had happened to uh, Dan and Judy that uh, I, I'm, I'm taking a wild guess, and this book has confirmed it, that Dan <coughs> Dorson and Hambone Littletail do not agree on Corona Panic uh, or the V word. Uh, and uh, I don't know if Dan's aware, so maybe Dan is just now learning that uh, Hambone, uh, just as he thought on day one, thinks compared to what is coming down the pike, Corona Panic is a bad hair day, and that after studying all the evidence that is available to Dan, I have, I have the same evidence that me, I have decided not to be vaccinated against Corona Panic because I have never seen one scintilla of evidence that it is in my best interest to get a uh, corona panic vaccine the day I see that sliver of evidence that it is in my best interest to get one, I'll get one. I could care less if Dan and Judy uh, are, are both vaccinated, which I'm assuming they are. But anyway, I might be making incorrect assumptions. But uh, uh, all of this is just to say, guys, that Dan Durson is, is rock solid in my book. And maybe after I finish this, the, the, this video, uh, Dan will, will kind of wish that he wasn't rock solid in, in my book. So uh, again, I'm basically what, you know, addicted to BS. Dan Dorson, he, he just goes down uh, the list of all of this unadulterated horseshit, J just noise out there, absolute noise, I I you know, just touching uh, on every, well, as he puts, he, he goes, this is just a smattering uh, uh, of the uh, of the bullshit that he uncovered in his survey, just the, the amount of energy, the time, energy, and money that humans spend on believing and spouting bullshit. Uh, and I, I, I want to say, uh, from the very beginning, just, it's going down. I'm, I'm only, I'm probably an eighth of the way through your book, Dan, uh, at, at this point, I would say I probably agree with Dan. My guess is if we actually put the list out there, that Dan Dorson and I would be in 99% agreement about all of the unadulterated horseshit going on out there. 
it, 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 just, just pick a subject. Dan thinks is bullshit, and there's a 99% chance that I think is bullshit too. Okay. Uh, how many times have I said I understand I have a 148 IQ. I have five years of college with uh, logic classes, uh, you know, a journalism degree where I was, you know, trained to evaluate evidence and reach a conclusion. Uh, I think uh, I consider myself to be in command better than most people. My discernment and critical thinking abilities, I honestly believe, are better uh, than, uh, than, than most people. I hope that doesn't sound too arrogant. Um, putting that out there, there for the record. Uh, now, there's one thing, as I say, which I haven't heard Dan talk about, and if I get to interview him, I, I want to touch on this, is what I call the two classes of bullshit. There, there's the there's the dangerous bullshit, the uh, obviously the dangerous bullshit being uh, religious extremist <coughs> uh, climate change deniers and ecological overshoot deniers. Uh, there, 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 there's that level where people's uh, belief in an unadulterate <coughs> unadulterated <coughs> horseshit can literally have negative, can have deadly consequences, not only just uh, on humans, but on this planet. And this is what I will be interviewing Dan about uh, if, if, if he agrees to an interview in a couple of weeks. It, it, it is that brand of bullshit that really does have, you know, ha have bearing on what is unfolding on this planet. How this deluge of bullshit uh, is, is taking this planet uh, right directly into a brick wall. And I don't know if he ever mentions, I haven't found here, the single biggest bullshit on the planet believed by 99.9% .9 of the people that you can have unlimited growth on a finite planet. So Dan, I don't know if you get to the number one biggest uh, piece of bullshit in the history of humanity that you can have infinite growth on a finite planet. Dan Dorison, a biologist, understands you cannot have infinite growth on a finite planet. So anyway, there's that, there, there's that kind of bullshit. That is the kind of bullshit, uh, and, and I would include hopium, the, the ain't gonna happen, apocaloptimism, uh, bright green lie, hopium, unadulterated horseshit. <clears throat> I would lump that, uh, the, 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 you know, the energy transition and, and all of that crap uh, as part of the dangerous bullshit. Then on the other side of the fence is what I call the fun bullshit. Okay, the fun bullshit. And uh, he starts right out with it on his list. Bigfoot number one and UFOs number two. And I don't know why he didn't put ghosts uh, number three, but, it, but it's all of this shit from Bigfoot to UFOs to ghosts to, uh, what did he have, tarot cards. He, uh, he actually found something called vaginal steaming. All of these uh, alternative health things, whatever, it's, it's the fun bullshit that it doesn't matter if people's belief in crazy shit, uh, whatever it is, Bigfoot, uh, tarot cards, uh, he mentions here in particular, uh, if, if, if people's crazy 
just batshit crazy beliefs and, and, and obviously crazy bullshit uh, is not harming anybody. If, if, if nobody is being harmed by it and it's not negatively affecting the planet, and, and a lot of times these bliss ninnies who believe this bullshit do actually are, are, are less of a danger to this planet uh, than, the, than these goddamn uh, climate change denying, overshoot denying uh, religious zealots. You know what I'm saying. They, the, 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 these bliss ninny looney tunes. Uh, so what? I, I mean, sure, it's fun. It, it, it's fun to uh, make fun of those kind of people. Uh, but if they're not hurting anybody, why, why, and this is what I don't get, and I'm sorry I had to ban Andy the Gardener from Humpty Dumpty Tribe. I guess you guys know uh, because Andy the Gardener had to wish me a happy birthday. So I had to kick him off. But, it, but, but Andy the Gardener is a perfect example. Why do people just get so unbelievably enraged when people believe in some crazy batshit, whatever, that has nothing to do with them or, or anybody else. It's not hurting them. It's not hurting uh, anybody, any, anybody else. It's not hurting the planet. Why do people, and I don't know if I would include Dan in this. He's just, he's interested in the phenomenon. I can't tell if how exactly triggered Dan Dorson being a classically trained scientist. Um, why do these people get so triggered by people who believe in, in fringe ideas? This is what I don't understand. Uh, I don't believe, and, and, and as I say, I, I, I'm, I'm with Dan on 99% of this. Uh, I, have, uh, I have friends who drink their own piss. Uh, I have friends, of course, who, who guzzle uh, colloidal silver. Uh, I have uh, my, my, my sister, who is a college-educated nurse, big believer in acupuncture. Uh, my, my dear friend in Atlanta, uh, Ariel, uh, she's an astrologer and a tarot card reader. I, I, I have friends from all over the spectrum. Uh, my, my buddy Fat Boy, good God, I don't have lost track of where he is. My, my, my good friend uh, Osama, uh, obviously, uh, I love the man. He believes in a lot of crazy shit that I don't believe in, that I don't agree with him in. It has nothing to do. I don't give a fuck. It makes these, it, 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 I, I like crazy friends. I, I actually enjoy people who have uh, who have crazy beliefs and, and aren't afraid to admit it. <laughs> I, 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 am, I am not the least bit triggered because somebody believes in tarot cards or drinking their own piss. As long as they don't want me to drink their piss, I don't give a fuck. It's like, well, whatever. Uh, you know? Uh... <laughs> Uh, go for it. Uh, it. It makes no difference to me. I still love you. Uh, just brush your teeth uh, after your next glass of piss. Uh, so anyway, I don't even know if Dan is one of these people. So with all of that, of course, it, it, if Dan is unaware of this, because I would like to be much better friends with Dan and Judy than I am. The, these are the kinds of people that I wish lived next door uh, uh, to, to, you know, to be running buddies with. I absolutely, uh, it, 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 you know, in my entire life, I've spent maybe five days in their company. Absolute joy. Uh, and you know you're in, uh, in, in tele, you, you know, you're dealing with 
intelligent people. I, Judy is a retired, I think, high school teacher, if I recall. Uh, so I, 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 I hope I'm not, th I'm not threatening the friendship uh, because I think Corona Panic is a bad hair day. And uh, I have chosen not to get the vaccine because I have never seen one scintilla of evidence that is in my best interest. If that's not enough to scare them away, surely they're aware that over the past 15 years uh, that I have come on here and stated for the record that I, Hambo Little Tail, was abducted by space aliens for 22 years of my life, that I lived in a haunted house with a poltergeist. I have interacted uh, with poltergeist, and of course, uh, I spent a month uh, on a Bigfoot hunt uh, in, in Washington State, uh, hoping to see Bigfoot. So let's just start with Bigfoot. Now that's the easiest one. Now, uh, the I am on the fence about Bigfoot. I have always been on the fence about Bigfoot. Uh, I do not reject the possible existence of Bigfoot. Now, I do think with every passing year, there's a better and better chance that Bigfoot does not exist because humans are driving Bigfoot to extinction if they have not already, mainly through habitat destruction in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, I spent 30 days in the heart of Bigfoot country, never saw one scintilla of evidence of being in, in the epicenter uh, of Bigfoot reports in this entire, the, the county with the most uh, reports of Bigfoot of any county in the United States, spent 30 days uh, wishful thinking uh, never saw one sign of Bigfoot. I have never seen a Bigfoot. Uh, I'm completely skeptical of 99% of these bullshit videos. The, the big outlier, of course, being the Patterson film from 1967. I do not discount uh, the Patterson film. But uh, what it is, and this is what drives people like Dan and uh, Andy the Gardener, and, and this is true, whether it's Bigfoot, ghosts, or UFOs, is anecdotal evidence. Anecdotal evidence. I do not, with my five years of journalism training, my 148 IQ, I do not 100% uh, just completely reject anecdotal evidence. If it's a, a pool uh, of, uh, of one or two people is one thing. If you have thousands of years of anecdotal evidence, including from people that you personally know. Uh, you know, my, my, I had this girlfriend, three o'clock, in the afternoon, uh, on a Sunday afternoon, she was standing broad daylight, six feet in front of a Bigfoot. Okay? She was looking right into a Bigfoot's eyes. And she doesn't give a fuck what, uh, what other people... And this is the other thing. She knows... She, I'm on the fence about Bigfoot. She is not on the fence. She's going, hey, Moon, I was standing six feet in front uh, uh, of an in-the-flesh Bigfoot at three o'clock on a Sunday afternoon for, you know, easily a full minute looking into the eyes of a Bigfoot. It wasn't a fucking bear. It wasn't a fucking dude in a monkey suit. I choose to believe her. And I do not uh, 
I personally have never seen a Bigfoot. I've never seen a Bigfoot footprint. I've never seen a pile of Bigfoot shit. I've never seen a hair on a barbed wire fence. You know what I'm saying. But there is enough anecdotal evidence for me <coughs> to put bullshit, to put Bigfoot in the bullshit maybe category. Uh, now, now I do agree. My guess is that 99% of Bigfoot sightings are uh, are not really Bigfoot sightings. But whether it's Bigfoot, ghosts, or most importantly, UFOs, this is where I probably differ from Dan Dorison. If 99.99% of Bigfoot reports, UFO and space alien reports, and ghost and polter, poltergeist reports, just to pick three, 99.99% of them are unadulterated horseshit, which is what I believe. 99.99% of, uh, of these reports are unadulterated horseshit for whatever reason, that does not detract from the fact that if 0.01% are real, if, if one Bigfoot report is real, if one UFO space alien report out of the millions and millions over the last thousands of years uh, is real, uh, what did I, where am I, ghost, if one ghost or poltergeist is real, it, it, it completely takes the other 99.99% of unadulterated horseshit ones, puts them in the trash. Okay? I don't give a fuck if 999,999 reports, uh, anecdotal reports of UFOs, uh, Bigfoot, and, uh, and ghosts, if 999,999 of them are bullshit, if one of them is real, then they're real. Okay? I don't have a problem with that. Okay, so that's just real quick. I, I, I'm not going to sit down here. We, we've already covered uh, Bigfoot enough to me. Uh, I have no personal. Uh, I, I have no personal uh, history with Bigfoot. But I guarantee you, if I ever do see a Bigfoot, especially at 3 o'clock on a Sunday afternoon, standing six feet in front of me, uh, I'm going to be a... I will know if it's, if it's a fucking bear or a dude in a monkey suit, number one, and I will be a hell of a lot bigger believer in Bigfoot than I am now, if it happens to me. And I won't give a flying fuck what Dan Dorison, Andy the Gardener, or anybody else has to say about it. I don't give a fuck that you don't believe. Your non-belief in, in Bigfoot means nothing to me. So why does my belief in Bigfoot uh, get you so fucking freaked out? I'm mainly talking to Andy the Gardener here, but of course he can't answer because he's been banned from the channel. Okay, I, I, I'm not going to rehash 16 years uh, uh, of talking about what I mean when I say I have been abducted by space aliens for 22 years, from the age 18 uh, to 40. I have never seen a UFO or a space alien in my entire life. I've seen a few weird little lights in the sky like we all have. 
but you know what I mean. I have never seen the fucking UFO sitting out on the lawn with the little space aliens walking around it uh, 40 feet outside my window like my mother did when she was uh, on morphine uh, the last two weeks of her life. When she was on morphine, she was seeing clearly and describing to me the UFO and the little guys and the, you know, and uh, which I'm not surprised by that because after, and remember guys, one more time, you've heard this me say this a million times, I was a hell of a lot more deep deeper into the UFO space alien uh, stuff uh, earlier in my life than I am into the Doomer shit now. Okay. Uh, I spent years uh, studying the phenomenon uh, of UFOs, space aliens, and particularly alien abduction. Uh, I have done my research and what I did, uh, after all those years down the rabbit hole, I rejected probably 99% of it, unadulterated horseshit. This crap uh, that you read, that you see on YouTube and shit. It's unadulterated horseshit. This UFO space alien crap. So I had that on one hand, and then I was getting, quote, abducted by space aliens. And uh, my mother, uh, you, you know, who agrees with Dan Dorison that it's all bullshit, you know, she always said, you're going to find what has been happening to you has something to do with brain chemistry. I don't know what it is, Sam, but, but you're going to find out. And, and it wasn't long after she died that Rick Strassman came out with his book, a, a doctor, a classically trained medical doctor, came out with DMT, the spirit molecule, and I had my big epiphany. I can, <coughs> I can only speak for myself, but I think I'm speaking for hundreds, if not thousands, if not millions of, quote, alien abductees. What it is, is a DMT imbalance in your brain is what sets off these experiences. So what my mother would do with that, she would have read Rick Strassman's book, and she goes, there you go, Sam, case closed. We do, for some reason, uh, you're having a, a, a DMT uh, dump in your brain uh, at night and triggering these weird things. It's brain chemistry, just like I said, case closed, you're not being abducted by space aliens. So, if, 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 if that satisfies you and you think the case is closed, fine. I, uh, I, 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 up until age 40, uh, between the ages of 18 and 40, I had these weird instances where my brain, my, my pineal gland, uh, would leak some uh, DMT into my brain during the night, and I would have these weird uh, abduction experiences. And uh, there, there you go. And the other thing is, uh, could it be, as Rick Strassman was uh, saying at the end of his research, which of course completely ruined his reputation and career, is that DMT is the spirit molecule, the spirit molecule, it is the way that we communicate with the spirit world, the spirit world, and these little fucking space aliens, in my case, they rode in, their UFO was the DMT molecule, and these, uh, and, and so when I was relating with these entities, 
when uh, I, I was having these DMT, they, uh, it was brain chemist. I was lying there asleep in my bed. I've had witnesses. You know, I was married for seven years. My wife would used to see me having these experiences uh, asleep in bed. But the experience was very real. And then there's, of course, you can go read, listen to my How I Kicked a Space Alien's Ass, how I finally put this to bed. It's when I was communicating with this woman over there in England who Dan Dorson would consider an absolute lunatic crackpot told me what to do to get rid of these space aliens once and for all and forever. I took her advice. You can find it on the video, How I Kicked a Space Alien's Ass. If you're suffering from this, and I took her advice, and I have never since. In 25 years, I have never seen a UFO or a space alien again. 22 years of living hell was put to bed that night because I chose to listen and pay attention to an obvious fucking crackpot lunatic over there in England telling me how to get these space aliens out of my life once and for all and forever and i don't give a flying fuck what rick as much as i love you dan as much as i love you andy the gardener i don't give a fuck what you have to say whatever your uh whatever your explanation is what i don't give a fuck this is what i believe I dealt with it for 22 years. I assure you, if I had never been abducted by space aliens over a 22-year period of my life, I would be a hell of a lot more on uh, Dan Dorson and Andy the Gardener side, side that it's not 99.9% .9 bullshit, it's 100% bullshit. When it happens to you, all of this other shit goes out the window, which gets me into the poltergeist, into that haunted house uh, that I lived in uh, out there uh, outside of Eugene, Oregon, uh, back in the early 1990s, where I lived in a house haunted by a poltergeist for two years. Before I, before I moved into that house, I was probably, I would say I rejected 99.99%. Uh, I mean, I just didn't think about a ghost and poltergeist. I mean, they were fun stories until it happens to you. And uh, if what happened to me in that house had happened to Dan Dorson or it happened to Andy the Gardener or whoever else listening to this that it's never happened to, I guarantee you, you would be a lot bigger believer in, in, in ghosts or poltergeists. Same with UFOs. I reject 99.99% .99 of the UFO bullshit. But if I look out that fucking window in 20 minutes and, and, and there's a goddamn UFO sitting out there on the grass and there's little space aliens walking around, I, I, I'm, I'm sober as the fucking judge. I guarantee you in a space of three seconds, uh, I will go from rejecting 99.9% .9 of the UFO space alien bullshit to becoming a 100% believer in it. And this is why uh, with the poltergeist, uh, I, I, I don't know uh, all of these thousands and thousands of reports of ghosts and poltergeists, if they're true or not. All, all I know is what happened to me. And there is no explanation. You know, basically, the, the big one with me was a 16-pound bucket of water 
two gallon bucket of water sitting on the floor going sailing across the room through the air to smash up against a wall about 16 feet though so a 16 pound bucket of water flying uh, eight feet in the air smashing into a wall 16 feet from where the fucking thing was sitting on the ground uh, I, I, I don't give a fuck what explanation you come up with. I have an easier time saying, well, it was fucking poltergeist. And after it happened, I started finding more and more reports uh, of people who had lived there and visited there that th this was a well-known uh, haunted house called the Gypsy House. And then I, you know, I've told the story, which I'm not going to repeat here. You can find these videos uh, about my experience and then about the guy I sold the house to. How uh, this poltergeist was going around turning on all the faucets in the middle of the night. And how this dude grabbed his children, uh, this big, badass gun-toting Mormon grabbed his two children in the middle of the night, fled into the night, never to set foot on that property again. I believe the dude. What happened to him with, 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 with that fucking thing uh, going around the house, turning on all those faucets. You know, then he, he, you know, he got up, he turned off all the faucets, he went back to bed. Ten minutes later, all of the faucets in that house had been turned on. There is no, you know, I, I don't give a fuck what you guys want to say. It was some neighbor playing a prank on a, on a heavily armed, uh, you know what I'm saying. Uh, it was the poltergeist. I believe this. If the, and now, and the people who he sold it to, the family who, as far as I know, still lives there, uh, they're reporting the same thing. Everyone who's been in that fucking house talking about that poltergeist, including me. All I can tell you is there's a fucking poltergeist in that house. And there's nothing... Uh, that Dan Dorson, uh, Andy the Gardener, or anybody else is going to tell this college-educated 148 IQ uh, doomer with a brain any different. So save your breath. I'm sorry if you are so triggered because... Uh, I happen to believe that the reason that 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 16 pound uh, bucket of water went flying across a room was because of a poltergeist. It wasn't because of a gust of wind coming through a pipe. Okay. Anyway, so that that's the uh, but, but uh, so those were just my three experiences, and, and I'm sure uh, I could go down this list. The reason I can join Dan and, and laughing at these people believing this crazy shit uh, is because it's never happened to me. It's never happened to me. Which is the main way uh, I can laugh at people. Well, it's never happened to me, so it can't happen. Bullshit. I will call bullshit on that one. And with that, if Dan Dorson is still speaking to me, and I hope he is because I really want to have an intelligent conversation with uh, two people... Uh, who uh, are, are fed up with bullshit, uh, you know, uh, about the bullshit that matters. It's not as fun to talk about, uh, but I want to have a serious discussion with Dan uh, about the bullshit that matters and get his, and get a biologist opinion on the bullshit that matters. And, uh, and that will be probably posted on that other channel 
in a couple of weeks if Dan Dorison is still speaking to me and agrees to it. All right. What am I going to do for the next eight hours of my life? I'm going to get back to addicted to BS and find out a little bit more about uh, vaginal steaming. I'm going to learn how to steam a vagina while I still can. Bye, guys.